united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning. God bless you. This is a great day. It's a day that God has given us. And I feel very privileged to be here with you this day. And I do believe that God has something for you. Uh, today, we, we have a, a message, just something that God puts on our heart that I want to share with you, my wife and I. And, and today, it's, it's about an issue that I believe everybody uh, goes through. If we are in Christ, I truly believe that we've been through this, this point. And we, it was necessary for us to come to this point, for us to come to Christ. Uh, it's about the life of Jacob, and he, he went through a lot of things. And I don't want to go more into detail without first just putting in the, in the hands of the Lord. Uh, to, today we have uh, uh, my wife, Esther, with me, and we're going to be sharing with you today. So before we do anything else, let's just put it in, in the hands of the Lord this morning. Father, in this moment, we just yes, thank you. Lord. For the opportunity and blessings that you've Bless given us. You, a great day, the great weather, Lord. Yes. Just life that you've given us, Lord. We can breathe freely. Thank you, We Lord. thank you for the healing, Lord, when we were sick. We thank you for all that you provided for us. We commit this time to you, and I ask you, Lord, to forgive us for what is not pleasing to you, and let there not be anything in our life to hinder you from speaking to us. I put everything in your hands, Lord, and I ask you for the word that you have for each of us in this day. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. I would like to start with, it's in the book of Genesis. Um, I'm going to be reading in the book of Genesis chapter 32. And this story, we've probably read it a lot. We've probably heard messages on it. Um, but this is so striking because... It applies to every man, woman, boy, and girl. It's about the life of Jacob. And just to give you a background on it, uh, Jacob, he had a tough life. Uh, he tricked his brother. He tricked his father. Uh, when I say tricked, I mean he deceived them just to get what he wanted. And when he did that, it caused problems. When he did that, uh, it was to the point where there was anger in the family, and his brother was really thinking to kill him. So to alleviate himself from that, he, he fled with the advice of his mother. He, he fled to the house of his, his uncle, the, mother, the brother of his mother, and hoping that living there, that things would get better. And while he was there, uh, we can say God blessed him. We can say that that was when God really began to bless him. But there was one thing that he had in his life that followed him and that thing is what we're going to talk about today and this is what brings us to this uh, the portion of the scripture where we're reading in Genesis chapter 32 and we're going to start with um, verse 22 and we're going to go to verse 25 Genesis 32 verse 22 through 25 and the word of God says and he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Now, when we come to this point in the story, it's about when Jacob was about to go back to the land that he left after all these years. We're talking a period of over 20 years. And from this time, he, he, he was tremendously blessed by God. And, and he had made a vow before he went to his uncle's land that if God be with him, if God bless him, if God protect him, if God brought him back to that land, that he would that God would be his God. So now comes a time where he has to go back to that land. But the problem was, in the way of that, was his brother, the one he tricked. Years had passed, but Jacob still had it in his mind of 
what he did to his to his brother. Now, why are we speaking on this? Because all of us personally, I take the word of God and I, I have to apply it to, to, to my life. You have to apply it to your life. It's not just a book, 66 books of, of you know, good stories. This is, these are life lessons that we can learn. And when we take this story right here, that is us. That is us in this story because at one point we were, we were lost. We were doing a lot of things that were just not right. And we hurt people. We mistreated people. And we took the methods, we took the means to try to alleviate the problem. We did things that we thought were, were okay. And for us, it was fine. And we may have gone on with our life. We may have gone on to start a family, just as in this case with Jacob, uh, have a career, have many blessings that God has given us. We cannot deny that. But the one thing was that unfinished business, that one unfinished part of our life that was still there. And this is where Jacob was. And for him to have to go back to his land, he had to meet his brother, the one that he tricked out of, a, out of the blessing, out of the father's blessing. And he was afraid. He was afraid because he didn't know what really was going to happen. And he came up with all these plans as to what he was going to do and how he was going to get that get past that and this is where he he is right now and he began to wrestle with God we wrestle with God and we have had times where God was really speaking to us but we didn't we didn't get it you know Jacob had times when God was speaking to him but he didn't get it when he got the birthright from his brother from his brother he didn't get it that that was wrong he still did it. When he deceived his father, he didn't get the message that what he did was wrong. When he fled to his uncle's land, that was still a time that he could meditate on what he did and decide to change, but he didn't. He goes to his uncle's land, and then the first thing that happens there, he gets tricked. So it was going back and forth between him and his uncle, and all this time, over a period of 20 years, he still didn't get it. You know, and that's what I truly believe, what happens with us. God could be speaking to us, and we still don't get it because of all the different things that are happening, we, we still don't get it that, you know, God is trying to get us to be on the right path. Now, I want to pass it to Esther um, because when we read this story, this is where Jacob is at. He's at that point where God is dealing with him. And now, what do you do? What do you do when God really starts to deal with you? Esther, I want to pass it to you um, so you can share your thoughts on on, on this verse of scripture. Go ahead. It's interesting, Eric, that Jacob was going back to his, to his old land, his old town, right? He was going to meet his brother. And the thing is, he has unresolved issues with his brother Esau. So now he was afraid. He was really afraid. In this situation, he he couldn't do anything. He, he don't know what to expect. And what Jacob did is a positive thing. He knows God was commanding him to, to leave the house of his, his father-in-law. And now he will face uh, his brother who was angry. After all these many years, Jacob still remember. Jacob still know what he has done. And one of the good things that he did, he, he prayed. He prayed to the Lord, and he asked him to be with him. He, re, he reminded him, you promised God. You promised, and you will bless me. And that's one of the things that we can learn in this situation in the life of Jacob. I was looking to what it means. Just the name of Jacob, it means uh, supplanter. But when he wrestled with God, he... His name was changed. God changed his name. And he said, you have been, you have been successful. He, he went, and God gave him another name, which was Israel. And the name of Israel, it means wrestle with God. One thing that I can learn and can be applied to us, sometimes we're trying to do God's will. Sometimes we know we have a conviction what I'm doing, I think is what God wants me to do. But the things are 
are hard, the things are difficult. It seems like we're failing in what we're doing and we don't want to continue. But one of the things we can learn here is that we need to hold on long enough. Jacob, he wrestled the whole night until morning and he don't want to let go the angel. He don't know what's wrestling with God, but he didn't want to let go until he got his blessing. And it's something to learn. It's something we can apply to our lives. Sometimes we so quick to to give up. We don't want to continue. We, we want to give up. And it's something to learn. We need, I like this scripture, Derek, in Genesis. is when God gave promises to Abraham. And I'm going to read this in Genesis 12, 2 and 3 verses. It says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curse you. And in you all the families of the land of the earth shall be blessed. This is a promise that I love. And this is a promise that wasn't just for, for Abraham. Jacob was was getting that promise for himself. He was fighting for, and this is a promise that we can hold on to. That is for us to, if we believe. If you have received the Lord, and you are working in His ways, and you trying to do His will. We need to hold on this promise and believe that we are blessed people, and we can call on those promises and say, Lord, this I don't see the result yet. I'm trying to do it. But it may be not the time to give up. We just need to continue waiting on the Lord's promise, and He will fulfill His promises. You know, this is it's very interesting, Esther, when you mention it, because you, you, you touched on a very, uh, it's a very real point that you made when you mentioned of Him trying. And I, wanna, I want us to just take a moment to think about it, what's happening in this story because that's what Jacob was doing. He was trying. He was trying to just move on with his life. And in this day and age, there are people, I believe, that they have good intentions. They're, we can say they're good people. Um, they're trying to do what's right. They're trying to be a good mother, a good father. They're trying to be a good son, a good daughter. They're trying to be a good employee. They're, they're not, when we, when we talk to people about the Lord, um, I hear it many times where they, it's like what the Pharisees said, that God, I thank you that I'm not like this person. I give this, I give that, I'm, I don't do this. And that's the mentality that, 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 that is existent in this day, where people think that if I do certain things, I'm okay. But what they're not realizing is that there's an area in each of our lives that God has to change. There's an area in, in, our, in our lives that has been hindering that complete connection with God, that complete contact that we need with the Lord. And this can go on for years. This can go on for years. And I can testify, and I believe that others can testify of how someone came to them and talked to them about the Lord. But when we look back, during those times, we, we thought we were okay. You know, we thought that everything was fine. But when someone comes to us to, to bring the Word of God to us, it's because God wants to do something in our life. It's because there's something that He wants to, to change in our life. It's something that has to be removed in order for us to have that relationship with us uh, with Him. And Jacob, he had that that unresolved issue in his life with his brother, with his past that he needed to deal with. And God allowed him to come to that point where he was blessed. And when we read it, when you read the story of Genesis of how much he gave to his brother, what he sent as, an, as a gift to his brother, it was a lot. We're talking over 500 animals that, that he gave out of what he had. So we know that he had more than 500 to give just as a gift to his brother. And when he did that, he was thinking that, that this was going to make things better when his brother received it. But what he did not realize that there was something more deeper than that. 
And that's what we all need to understand, that there's deep things in our lives that the Lord, he has to remove it in order for us to continue walking with him. There's problems that we may have had in the, in the past or bad experiences. Uh, about two weeks ago, we spoke on the, the, the theme of forgiveness. And there, it's that, that, that holding on to these things that no one wants to let go of. They suppress it. It's just covered. And as long as they're staying busy, as long as they stay around the right people, as long as they do what they have to do, then they're okay. And this is what Jacob was doing. He was okay. I mean, he was literally blessed. He had a lot in that time. But God was looking beyond that, beyond the blessing. God was looking at the heart of this soul. And that's what he's doing with, with me. That's what he's doing with you. He's looking at our heart. And, and if there's things in our heart that are just need to be removed, we come to that point where we start to wrestle with God. And this is what Jacob was doing. And Jacob was, was just wrestling with him. And, you know, the interesting thing about it is when we read this story, Jacob knew it. He knew it. He knew that he had to face it. And he was afraid. And as Esther mentioned, he prayed. He asked God. And when we read in verse, verse 11, he says, Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. He was afraid that if he just went on his way, that Esau was going to remember what had happened and Esau was just going to show no mercy to him. And Jacob realized that, God, I need you. You know, all of all this time that he's been through this stuff and all the things that he had done over all those years, he never prayed like this. It was a, it was a sincere prayer that he put before the Lord. And that's what we have to do. We have to come to that point where we say, God, I can't do this. God, I'm tired. God, I, I've tried all that I can. God, I need you. Lord, here I am. And this is where Jacob was. And while he was at that point, that was when he really began to wrestle with God. And to wrestle, it was like a fight but not physical, where punches are thrown. It was more of, you know, hand in hand, where one is trying to dominate the other. And how often do we do that, where God is telling us to do something, and we wrestle with it? We, we, we say, I know, Lord, but, and we, we, we try to take another route to it, and we're wrestling with God with it. And God doesn't want us to wrestle with it, because what he shows us in this process, that when we wrestle with him, we're going to lose. And in a moment, God can change the thing. In a moment, God can speak to us. In a moment, God can touch us where the things just completely move, where the things completely change. And this is what he did here in the case of, in the case of Jacob. Uh, Esther, we have a couple more minutes here. Uh, do you have any more thoughts with this that you would like to share? Yes, I'd like to share um, in verse 26. Is the last part it says, I will not let you go unless you bless me. This is Jacob talking to, to God, to the angel. He, he didn't even know he was fighting with God. And when we talk about wrestling, we're not talking about, um, we can think against. But we can, some people wrestle just like Jonah in the Bible. He wrestled against God's will. And in this case, it wasn't that... Um, type of wrestling against his will. This, this was a wrestling because he wanted blessing. And this, this is the way we need to, to wrestle uh, with God. We, we don't let go the blessing. Sometimes we too quick to give up, like I said earlier. But we need to understand, we need to know that God doesn't change. We may change our mind. We may change because sometimes the things are not working. If we're looking for a job, we very easy give up. We, we feel like we're failing. If we trying to serve God, even in ministry. Sometimes we don't see the things we want to see in the church. We see the opposite and we get discouraged. But the Bible, this lesson teaches us and give us a lesson to we need to continue believing that God is faithful, that he doesn't change. 
he fulfilled his promises. And I like, um, I'm going to share with you 2 Corinthians 1, 20. It says, for as many are the promises of God in him, they are yes. Therefore, also through him is our amen to the glory of God through us. His promises are yes. And we need to, to understand that. I don't know about you that are watching the program. I don't know about your situation. Maybe you're passing through a, a problem or hard times, or maybe you're feeling like a failure. But I want to tell you that those who trust God, those who promises on his uh, pro promise, they're victorious. And I want to say this, do not give up. Just stay firm and hold on to the promises of God. He love you and who will, will bless you, who will give you the, the victory that he gave to, to Jacob. He will give the blessing to you and you will receive it. And you know, this here is so interesting because when we talk about wrestling with God, the way God really got a hold of Jacob was to, for him to remember that he was running from God. God touched him. You know, the Bible says that until the breaking of the day, he was wrestling with, with a man. But when the man saw that he couldn't overpower him, he just touched him. You know, God is not just going to let us continue to wrestle with him over, over the things. You know, God is not just going to let us go back and forth, back and forth, kind of like children do with, with the parents. The parents tell the child, hey, this is the way it needs to be. But the child already has in his or her mind that, this is the way they want to do it. The parent is not going to sit there and go back and forth with that child because the parent is that authority. God is God, and we need to understand that. God is all-powerful, and he shows his power just by the touch of his hand on Jacob's hip. The Bible says that his hip was out of joint, which means it was dislocated. It was separated, and from that moment, he, he, was, he was reminded, he, he realized that, you know, I can't keep doing this. You know, what does it take for God to get your attention? What does it take for God to get the attention of his people to know that he is God? In this story right here, it took God to wrestle with Jacob. It took God to just touch him. And when we think about it, for someone to have a dislocated hip, it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. It was painful. It hurt. And sometimes God may have to use pain to get his people's attention. Is it necessary? Does it have to be that way? A lot of it is, it, it rests on the shoulders of that person where they have to realize that God has been talking to them all this time. How many times, let me ask you, how many times has someone invited you to church before you finally decided, okay, I'm going to do it? How many times has it been where you've had a feeling that you need to get closer to God, but up until that point, you haven't done it? You know, we all have those struggles. We all have those wrestles with God. But I want to tell you that when we wrestle with God, we're going to lose. And we don't need to do that. We just need to say, okay, Lord, you're talking to me. Your will be done. And the example we have is the Lord Jesus when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was praying. He knew that his time had come and the weight of the world was over him. The sin of the world was, was coming upon him. He knew he was going to die. And his words were, not as I will, but your will be done. And that's what we have to do. We have to say, Lord, okay, you don't want me to be in this relationship, even if I want to pursue it. Your will be done. You don't want me to work. Okay, Lord, your will be done. You don't want me to do this particular thing. Okay, Lord, your will be done. I want to invite you today to stop wrestling with God because we lose when we do so. When we look at the story of Jacob, it was when he had that point, when he came to that point of wrestling with God and after realizing that God is in control, when God touched him, from that moment on, we, can, we see a whole different Jacob. We don't see the same Jacob that was deceiving. We don't see the same Jacob that was running. We see the Jacob that was talking to his kids about the Lord and the Jacob that was holding on to the promise of God. And we see how God began to use him and how God began to fulfill that promise he gave him. And we see that in the lives of his children. Why am I saying this? There's a promise that God has for each of us. 
And that promise will become real when we stop wrestling with God, when we stop running, with God, uh, running from God, when we realize that God is God. And in a moment, he can change the things. In a moment, he could change someone's life. In an instant, you know, as the Bible says, in the twinkling of an eye, when we blink just that fast, God can change the things. And it is not our place to, to ask him when. It is not our place to ask him why. What we need to do is just say, Lord, I trust you. I believe your word. I believe in you. I want to say a prayer for you right now before we close. Esther, join with me. Father, in this moment, I pray for your, your, your people, those who are watching, those who are listening, those who may be going through struggles right now. Lord, you know what it is that they have been wrestling with. And I pray that today, this moment, that they surrender to you, whether it's an addiction, whether it's an idol, whether it's a relationship, whether it's something that they're pursuing or something that they're running from. I pray that today that they stop wrestling with you and that they submit to you as Jacob did, realizing that you are God. And Father, when they do so, I pray your blessing upon their food and over their water and over their health and their family. In Jesus name, I pray and I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, today God spoke to us uh, from his word, what we what we what we read in, in uh, wrestling with God and it's something that we all go through. Everyone, I believe everyone, even in the Bible, everyone in that, that has come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they had to come to this point. You know, when we read about Saul, he wrestled with Jesus, and Jesus changed him. It was an encounter. He, he had an encounter with the Lord, and his life was changed. And throughout the Bible, there's people where they, they had it in their mind what they want to do. You know, but the Lord turned the things around when they submitted to him. And I truly believe that that same promise re remains true for us, that if we submit to the Lord, we submit everything to him, our finances, our family, our health, our possessions, everything, it comes from the Lord. When we realize that the job that you have, the job that I have, the, the blessing that we have to, to minister the word, all of that, it comes from the Lord. And when we realize that it comes from him, all we have to do is just say, OK, Lord, your will be done. And when we do that, I truly believe that things will 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 change. Today, I want to invite you to stop wrestling with God. Stop running from God. Submit to him and let him do the work in your life and let him change whatever needs to be changed in your life. And you'll see the hand of God over your life and in the life of your family. May the Lord bless you in the work of your hands and your family. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSEE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903, or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours, or you can visit us on our website at www.kse.com. God bless you.